सो हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू चैनल गेट टू वंस अगेन इट्स बीइंग रियली वेरी वेरी लॉन्ग सिंस आई हैव कम अप टू दिस चैनल एंड अपलोडेड द कंटेंट ऑन द फर्मवेयर डेवलपमेंट ऑन माइक्रो कंट्रोलर्स सो आई हैव स्टार्टेड विद एसटीएम 32 एंड देन इन बिटवीन अपलोडेड सम ऑफ द इंट्रोडक्शन वीडियोस ऑन टेक्सस इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स एंड द नॉर्डिक कंट्रोलर्स आल्सो बट फ्रॉम नाउ ऑन आई विल बी मेकिंग अ स्टिक टू वन का माइक्रो कंट्रोलर एंड कंप्लीटिंग इट्स पेरिफेरल्स एंड एप्लीकेशन कोड्स एंड फर्दर आटोस so stm32 will be the series that i will be continuing with and i will make sure that my previous mistake is not repeated of being inconsistent so guys the reason behind my not being consistent is because i have been in i am in the final year of my btech so i am been finalizing all those things and also i am in finding the new job to start my professional career and i have got a job as a firmware developer in nxp semiconductors so that will be separate video i will be making about my journey about what things to do and those things now in this video we will be concentrating on the firmware development on stm32 microcontrollers so now without wasting time now let's start with this video So guys in this video we are going to start with the timer peripheral and in that timer peripheral we are going to write the driver for the timer input capture mode that is so as to capture the out the external signal square signals of pwm waves like as you can see here in uh, logic analyzer i have attached the oscilloscope uh, which is outputting the 10 kilohertz of frequency so this frequency and this square wave is being will be fed to the microcontroller and microcontroller will be identifying the frequency the duty cycle the time the period and the time width so all these things can be done using the timer peripheral input capture mode so in this video we are going to start with that topic only we are going to write the timer peripheral driver okay like as you can see over here i have written the driver and i will just show you the values you can see over here frequency is approximately 10000 duty cycle is 50 period it is showing width it is showing so that all things uh, it's in a output of uh, the the external signal is of 10 hertz okay frequency 10 kilohertz and almost my values are same over here so we are going to write the driver in bare metal coding using the timer peripheral okay so now let's start the now that's the agenda of that will be the agenda of the video now let's start first of all with the introduction to the input peripheral uh, of the timers okay like what all registers are there over in what all things we have to taken care of how does input capture mode works and what all those things okay so now let's start with the input capture mode briefing in stm32 microcontrollers So guys now starting with the timer input capture let's us first start with understanding the basic thing about the block diagram of our general purpose timers so in the block diagram of stm32 controllers general purpose timers you can see this area so this one this area left on the this side is for the timer input capture okay so here time x channel 1 time x channel 2 time x channel 3 time x channel 4 so what does this means that each timer in our stm32 controllers has four channels channel 1 channel 2 channel 3 channel 4 you can also see this if you will see the pin out so you can see there is names written as t4 c1 t4 c2 t4 c3 t4 c4 so this is timer for channel 1 2 3 4 now on the each channel okay we can sample the signals this ti stands for external external input pins so as it's in an input capture mode so it would be having a pin that can would be a, uh, capturing on uh, some input from external output so that's what ti here signifies for external input pin so external input pin 1 for channel 1 external input pin 2 for channel 2 channel 3 and channel 4 these are just terminologies which you have to know for understanding the better things uh, otherwise from the pin out you can directly see that which channel you are using timer 4 if you are using and which of its channel so timer for channel 1 is at the pin pb6 that is 42 pin number of this ic so pb6 will be used as timer input capture mode pin okay same way if you are using channel 2 of timer 4 then that pin so correspondingly you can see and look out the things 
now uh, as you, if we move forward from this thing so time x channel 1 these are the four channels that will be outputting or uh, inputting some uh, uh, signals uh, external signals at the ti1 ti2 ti3 ti4 bits which are nothing but just time uh, time x c x c y pins and then comes our input filter and s detector so what does these blo blocks do now these blocks will collect the uh, in output pair signal okay and it will filter them and detect that which of its edge is being uh, been detected whether it's high edge or low edge depending upon the high or low edge as corresponding some of the bits uh, we have to set and configure it and then uh, using the prescaler we uh, the counter values at what interval when counter will be incrementing from 0 to some value and then when and and as our edge detector detects some lower high edge then some uh, counter value will be stored at capture or compare register in the case of input capture it would be capture register okay because comparison will be done in pwm mode uh, when we are outputting some signal in case of input we will be capturing that thing so capture register it would be named as and depending upon the prescaler our frequency uh, the make the frequencies at which the microcontroller can capture that would be uh, dependent okay so i hope you got the basic idea what exactly how does this block diagram of input capture is now all the inner details i will tell you further okay so guys now starting with it so in our stm32 f103 there are two things in timer peripheral input capture input capture mode and the pwm input mode so now in this video we are just going to get a very basic overview that what are basically these two modes are and what is this and then in the next video we will get into the implementations of this by understanding the registers of these modes for the timer peripheral input capture mode so now in the input capture mode is a basic and simple one in which what happens is our value of the counter that is time x c and t logs the counter value at the capture register that is time x c r x uh as they it captures the it logs the counter value time x c and t values log into these registers as in when the s detector which i have told you in the previous block diagram uh, in the block diagram of peripheral of timer uh, peripheral s detector detects the transition chain in the external signal so now in the input capture mode you can understand and see that there is only one channel of the timer that will be occupied for capturing the s detector transition states okay so now only either at the rising or at the falling edge of the external signal can be logged into the ccrx register now whereas in the pwm input mode what happens is one can identify the frequency duty cycle time period and all such parameters how in this the external signal which is there which is pwm square signal it's rising edge and the falling edge both of these edges can be logged onto the timex ccr1 ccrx register ry registers so one register will be used to log the rising edge and one register will be used to log the uh, falling edge and by that how one can calculate the digital signal frequency time period or duty cycle so that is the main difference between the input capture mode in which only uh, one uh, transition state of the external signal is captured and in this the both the rising and falling uh, transition states of the digital signal can be captured which is used to help calculate the parameters of square signal. So this is the basic difference as you can see this is the PWM input mode timer okay. So this is my TI1 is the, uh, yeah, one more thing is that in PWM input mode, if you can see, there is involvement of the two ch channel registers, but it doesn't mean that we are going to use two external pins. We are going to use one external pin only and the one timer channel is directly connected to our external pin and another timer channel will be connected internally to that in external pin so that when the external pin higher uh, the low the like we can set its polarity that when the timer ti1 high edge comes so first channel will lock the channel when it's uh, falling edge will come so another channel will lock the value so that's an and that's how one can calculate these values like as you can see time xccr1 time xccr2 now ti1 is my square signal so it's falling edge is rising edge is directed so ic1 capture ic2 capture reset 
so i see one like that is ccr1 captures the data okay when ti1 is, this edge is come now when this edge is come i see to capture the uh, i see to will capture the value and its counter value will be keep on increasing okay so that's in and that's how one can calculate uh, the frequency and also parameter of the signal so that is the basic difference between input capture mode and the pwm input mode now in the next video we will go into the register descriptions of these and we will understand that what all registers are there and then we will start making a bare metal drive board so that's it for now like the video subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to get notified for new videos and share it with your friends